One of my favorite companies and the largest holding in the asymmetric portfolio is Spotify, but I haven't really covered Spotify much over the last couple of months in part because there hasn't been a lot to cover outside of earnings. There haven't been a lot of big announcements for Spotify, but I do want to circle back to the company because the stock has been doing extremely well over the past year. And I have called this a stock that can 10 X over the next 10 years. Now that was hundred percent ago. So that would be 5X from here, but obviously I think there's a lot of potential for Spotify. So I wanna dig into exactly where I think that potential lies from both a content perspective and how we're gonna see this the app change over the next few years, and then how that turns into monetization. Because at the end of the day, Spotify is gonna be driven by advertising, not just the premium business that we know today. So I'm gonna dig into all that. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content and thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's start by looking at the stock chart over the last year. This is Spotify's stock chart. You can see that shares are up 107% as I'm recording over the past year. Shares really bottomed out in late summer 2023 and have just been on a nice March higher since then. But what exactly has been going on? Well, there've really been two trends that have gone really well for Spotify. The first trend is monthly active users has been marching higher. Now you can see that this growth rate has slowed a little bit recently, only 2% quarter over quarter growth. Management basically said that they expect a little bit slower monthly active user growth over the next couple of quarters. Wouldn't be surprised to see them take add spending on some of the sales and marketing that they cut over the last 12 to 18 months, but the trends are still higher. So you can see that over the past year, 19% growth in total monthly active users. And most of those users are ad supported. This is primarily because Spotify's growth is primarily is really heavily tilted towards emerging markets. So the more mature markets, we're going to be able to charge 10, $12 a month for a premium subscription to us and Europe specifically are more saturated for Spotify. So a lot of their growth is going to be in more emerging markets that those are going to be much more ad supported markets. But you can see that price increases have impacted their financials really positively. And then you've seen a huge improvement in free cash flow. What has driven that cash flow? And this is really the big change for Spotify over the past year is improvements in their gross margin. So there's the premium side where they're charging a little bit higher prices, getting a little bit better margins for the premium business, but the ad supported business, which is where they have all the costs for the podcast business. Remember when they were signing those tens of millions of dollars of deals for exclusive podcasts? Well, they've really cut back on a lot of those. They still have a handful of exclusive podcasts, but the, a lot of the deals that they have are actually advertising deals. So like Joe Rogan's deal, for example, that is not now that, that is now not exclusive to Spotify, but Spotify is handling all the advertising for the podcast. So yes, that is an expensive deal, but it actually is a little bit like a streaming service signing up Netflix, signing up the NFL. You wanna have the best content to be the draw for advertisers. So that's kind of the thinking around that, but that's helped improve margins as, they, as they've cut some of those costs and really focused on improving margins on the ad side. Now, this is a business that should be more like a 30, 40, maybe even 50% gross margin business long-term, and it's still relatively small. 389 million euros up 18% year over year in the most recent quarter. So not particularly profitable, also relatively small business, but long-term, Advertising is where that growth is going to be, but that's the gross margin side of the story. So gross margins getting a little bit better revenue, getting a little bit better, but really the bottom line is driven by more efficient operating leverage. What operating leverage is, is if you're able to maintain your operating costs or grow them more slowly than you're growing revenue. If your operating expenses stay flat and your revenue goes up 10%, well, your net income is going to improve more than 10%. That's the idea behind operating leverage. What Spotify has actually can, what Spotify has actually done is reduce operating expenses. You can see that they peaked right here, Q2 2023. So we're gonna lap those numbers in the next quarter. And there's some wonky things that go on with what they call social charges. There's some stock-based compensation charges. There's also some layoff expenses that they've had, but overall these costs have come down and they should come down a little bit further or in the next few quarters because they've been so focused on those operating expenses. Now, the flip side is growth is slowing as they focused more on operating expenses. So there is a yin and a yang to this, but look for management to 
now start to focus on growing more profitably after they've seen, hey, when we cut operating expenses, the business doesn't completely collapse. So you add all three of those things together, monthly active user growth, better gross margins, helped by higher revenue per user, and better operating expenses. And that's really what has driven Spotify. But the future in the next 5X or 10X of the stock is really going to be driven by expanding the ecosystem beyond what we know it as today. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. When we think about Spotify's future growth, I want to start with the premium business. This is a little bit more straightforward thinking about how Spotify is going to grow. And the first thing that they're going to do is they are going to add audiobooks to the business. So you start out with the typical premium business, ad-free listening. You can download content, a little bit higher quality audio, all of those kinds of things. But now you start wanting to bundle in more content. If this is just a music business, it's not really all that attractive. It's not really all that attractive of an investment because there's just a limited market. And at the end of the day, you're going to be beholden to paying record labels who actually control the content that's on your service. But if you're able to expand into something like audiobooks and bundle music and audiobooks, now you're in a much better position. Now think about the next bundle. Is that podcasts? Is that some sort of video? You at least have optionality once you start bundling things like this together. So what they've done at first is add 15 hours per month of listening time for audiobooks in a number of their different plans. And the idea here is to get people used to using Spotify for more things than just music. If you're a podcast listener to listener like I am, Spotify can be a great platform. Music sits next to podcasts, but podcasts are monetized a little bit differently than music are. Audiobooks from a business model standpoint makes a little bit more sense because typically people are ch charging for an individual book, just like they were charging for an individual CD or album in the past. So is a better business model going forward, just streaming this content through audiobooks and paying a monthly subscription and then sharing that with publishers and authors. Well, it's worked really well for the music business. I think this could actually expand the pie for audiobooks. And the rumor is that they're going to be adding more tiers with added pricing, another dollar or two specifically just for audiobooks. So that would be a way to attract more content to the platform, more creators to the platform. And a lot of those audiobook creators may not come with publishing labels the same way that music is controlled by a handful of labels. So Spotify could be in a better position to negotiate with them just like a platform like YouTube, I'm a creator on YouTube, I don't have a lot of negotiating leverage against YouTube, but YouTube is providing an audience just like Spotify is providing an audience. So this could be a really good bundle for them. But at the end of the day, the growth for Spotify and the upside potential for Spotify is gonna be in advertising. Like I said, the any of these tech platforms ultimately become an advertising platform because there's just a limited audience of number of people who are gonna be able to pay a premium price. So what Spotify is trying to do is increase the number of advertisers on the platform and engage users a little bit better with the ads that are there. So this is at least part of the ecosystem that they're building and you need to attract listeners, which they have, and then you need to attract advertisers. You need to do a few things to do that. You need to be able to target their advertisements and you need to be able to provide them with the data that they need to ensure that those advertisements are actually generating a return on investment. And this has really been the challenge for Spotify and for the audio medium in general. You're not necessarily interacting with your phone when you're listening to music or listening to a podcast. So it's a little bit different advertising there versus advertising on a platform like Instagram or Facebook or even on YouTube. The content is also a little bit different. You're not just gonna be able to do a text ad like you could do previously on something like Google search and we're not going to do images the way that you're going to do on Instagram. Now we're talking about audio. Who's going to record that audio? What's that going to look like? So these are all problems building the infrastructure. And this is what Spotify has been working on. It's building out the infrastructure and the tools that everybody needs to be able to monetize and also create content. And that's where I think there's been progress, but we need to see more progress over the next few years. You can see in this chart that the advertising business has been growing, but it's kind of hit a wall hasn't been very good gross margin. That growth rate isn't in the 20, 30, 40% range that you might expect from a high growth business that still has a relatively small user base. So we need to see more progress on this front, but this is where tools like some of their artificial intelligence content creation, I think could be really interesting. We know that they've been testing that for at least six to nine months now where you can go in as an advertiser and have 
Bill Simmons read an ad for you by using his voice and artificial intelligence. He was actually the one that first brought this up on his podcast. He said that this was something that they were working on. So now you can take a piece of text content and turn it into a piece of audio content. That could create the kind of iterative loop that advertisers need to see is content working the way that we expect. We're also starting to see more video pop up on Spotify. I think this is really going unnoticed by the market. A lot of podcasts now have video and when you have video and people start to get watching your content on a screen, now you can show a different type of advertisement and it may be a little bit more engaging than it would have been otherwise. So I think these are little green shoots for Spotify, but if this is gonna be a stock that's gonna go to the next level, that's gonna be a 5X, 10X, the kind of company that could have a market cap in excess of 300, 400 billion dollars, they're gonna need to get advertising right. And that's really where I'm watching results over the next few quarters. Yes, I think there's obvious ways that they can grow the premium business and that's where the profit is today. But the upside potential for the company is in getting advertising right and having more and more users on the platform, attracting more and more creators on the platform, and really being a go-to place for not only audio content, but more and more for video content as well. So that's how the stock could really rise from here. Now, I'm a shareholder, but I do think Spotify shares have gotten very expensive. Forward price earnings multiple is 54. Yes, those margins are getting better, and it's hard to argue with growth, but we need to see a contribution from things like audiobooks, more from podcasts, more from advertising before this is going to deserve an even higher multiple. But what do you think about Spotify stock today? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.